The Battle of Changdong of 1765 during the Qing invasion of Burma is often overlooked in military history, even in the context of the war it kick-started. But it remains one of the few recorded incidents where war elephants retain its role in the 18th century, and it is a clear case study where experience and morale can overcome superior numbers and equipment. The war between the Burmese Kongbaung dynasty and the Qing Empire of China began due to the conflicts in the bordering Shan states. For a decade, both the Burmese and the Chinese were content to let their Shan vessels sort out their own issues, but the situation escalated when the Burmese armies left for the invasion of Ayutthaya. The Qing governor of Yunnan, Liu Zhao, seeing that the main Burmese armies were gone, used a minor trade dispute between the Burmese and Chinese merchants to send in a large detachment of imperial troops into the Shan states to settle the issue once and for all. In December 1765, the Qing army invaded the Shan state of Jaintong and lay siege to the capital. However, Jaintong was defended by a garrison of Burmese loyal Shan militia and after being reinforced by royal troops under Burmese general Neymyo Situ, they sallied out to meet the Qing in open field. The numbers provided by the Burmese royal chronicles were highly exaggerated and as a result, I will be giving a modern estimate based on those given by other modern historians. The Qing force was recorded to have consisted of around 5,000 foot and a 1,000 cavalry. The details of the Chinese forces are unknown, but the green stand-up troops likely wore the imperial blue uniform with the Manchu red tail caps and helmets, and likely wore Qing-style brigandy armor and mail. The Qing imperial infantry were likely armed with the single-edged Dao sword, spears, shields, halberds, and Manchu-style bows and matchlock muskets. The Qing cavalry were likewise armed with bows, daos, and lances, with the imperial unit likely being better armored than their militia counterparts. Consisting of around 2,000 infantry, 200 cavalry, and 20 war elephants, the Burmese army was primarily a conscript force, with most of Nemo Situ's army being levied Shan and Bamar infantry, wearing no universal uniforms except for red headscarves that symbolizes their military duties. The cavalry and elephant riders, however, were regimental troops wearing the red and green uniforms and red spiked cattle helmets. The Burmese infantry were armed with spears, shields, and muskets, while cavalry and elephanteers were armed with lances and carbines. Additionally, the hunter scouts, who were usually either ethnic Achin or Kaya, were armed with crossbows. All the Burmese soldiers, however, were universally armed with the Da, a single-edged sword with a slight curve at the end, a close cousin to the Chinese Dao in the region. Although the Burmese traditionally carried matchlock muskets, the Kaumbaung Royal Court had purchased or captured a large number of French and British flintlock muskets, which were far more reliable in the wet weather and considerably more accurate. On paper though, the Chinese army held a significant advantage. Not only do they outnumber the Burmese, but the Qing troops, particularly the soldiers of the Green Standard Army, would have had relatively standardized training and equipment. Their cavalry, even those of the Yunnanese militia, were generally considered to be superior to their Burmese counterparts. However, the Green Standard Army in practice often spent most of their time as a militarized police force in the empire, fighting against bandits and rebels. Meanwhile, the Burmese were battle-hardened from a vicious war of succession and were led by a decorated military commander. The following event was described by Colonel Henry Burney, a British officer who had translated the Burmese royal chronicles of the event. The Qing, in the last few decades, had raided into northern Burma and the Burmese Shan states during the fall of the Tangu Empire with ease. As a result, the Qing commanders would have likely looked down on the Burmese army, and because of this, the Qing began the battle by launching a massive cavalry charge as if hoping to wipe the Burmese off with one single move. As the imperial horsemen lowered their lances and galloped forward, massive shapes materialized in the distance. 
when they neared. The Burmese war elephants raised their trunks and trumpeted. The inexperienced Chinese horsemen panicked at the sight and sound of the great beast and fled from the field. The routing horsemen rode through and around their own infantry. Seeing the chaos engulfing the Chinese forces, Nemo Situ ordered a general attack. With their elephants in lead, the Burmese cavalry and infantry charged. By the 18th century, many nations, including the Chinese themselves, have learned to counter elephant charges. In the previous wars against the Burmese Shan state, the Chinese regularly used mass crossbow fire against armored elephants, which would rout the elephants quickly through sustained fire. However, the inexperienced Qing soldiers likely panicked in the face of such beasts, and after seeing their cavalry breaking and fleeing, most of the Chinese soldiers were already breaking ranks. The already disheartened Chinese infantry quickly fled before the elephants and were promptly cut down by the Burmese cavalry. The Burmese pursued the fleeing Chinese troops out of the Shan lands and finally caught up with them in Yunnan, where the expedition commander was killed and the army was broken. Because the Chinese had enjoyed easy victories against the previously weakened Burmese dynasties, the Battle of Chaintong proved to be a great shock to the imperial court. Governor Liu, in his embarrassment, committed suicide rather than face the emperor's wrath. The Qinlong emperor was enraged, and dealing with the Mian, the Chinese term for the Burmese, was now a matter of imperial prestige. <laughs> 